Hi folks, uh, welcome to chapter seven. Um, some graphing in this unit is a little bit harder later, but this lesson, first lesson, is super simple. Um, so we're just gonna start about what an absolute value is and just kind of talk about how we use them, what's the purpose of them, things like that. So 7.1 here, absolute values. Absolute values are a certain type of bracket. They, um, they are an actual bracket and we treat them when we're doing order of operations like a bracket, but they also have another purpose. They do, um, they, t they negate, they take away any negative. So if I'm trying to find the absolute value of X, I know that the answers to this can only be positive numbers. The way I talk about it is an absolute value is always a distance away from zero. So just like vectors have direction, um, velocity has direction, and speed does not, this is more like a speed. We take away direction. We know that if it's a negative answer, that it would be left of the zero. If it's a positive answer, it'd be right of the zero. So when we look at absolute values, really what we're looking for, I'm trying to find a highlighter, is the distance away from zero. And we're not concerned about the direction of it. Um, I'm just trying to see if I've got absolute vac brackets on my calculator. And I don't think I do. So you have to be smart enough to know what an absolute value bracket does um, because lots of calculators won't have them. Just looking complex, real. Nope, don't have them. Okay, so we gotta be smarter than our calculators because our calculators aren't gonna be super helpful here. So if we're looking at six, usually, usually if we're going to positive six, this is really hard to see, it's kind of photocopied, really not so great. I'm gonna zoom in the best I can. So if we're looking from zero to six in the positive direction, we know that's a distance of six, great. But if we're looking in the negative direction and we're talking about it in the terms of absolute values, we know that we're eight units away from zero. Doesn't matter what direction it is. So the distance away from zero, it's eight units. Now we could say eight units to the left. All of a sudden we've put a direction on it. Absolute values get rid of direction. So if we were to, um, if we were to figure out uh, what was in the absolute brackets, like we were supposed to be put an X in here, uh, the absolute value of positive five is positive five. The absolute value of negative five is positive five. So if we had something like this, just so you kind of get the idea, and I said it's similar to square roots because if we take the square root of four, um, our answers, the positive principal root always comes out to two. This is what our calculator tells us. We have to be smart enough to know that the square root of four can also be negative two, right? So our calculator doesn't show us this one because conversely, negative two times negative two will bring us, oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. Negative two times negative two brings us back to the positive four. That's why it works as an answer. So same sort of thing with absolute value brackets. If I say, hey, that's equal to five, um, we're like, oh, well then that has to be five in here, right? Easy peasy. But this could have two answers. It could be positive five or it could be negative five. So you have to be smart enough to know that. We'll get into solving absolute value equations a little bit later. Um, so right now I'm kind of going in depth and I'm going, you don't need to go this far, I guess, is my, what I'm trying to say here. All right. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna play with some absolute value brackets. Gotta be careful, just pay attention here. If we look at that negative two, that negative two is not in any brackets. That bracket belongs to the 3.5 and that bracket belongs to the negative 5.75. Okay, so let's dive in. And the easiest thing to do is evaluate 
all the absolutes. So the absolute value of 3.5 is 3.5. Negative 2 is going to stay negative 2 because there's nothing, there's no absolute value brackets around it. There's nothing that we're doing there. The absolute value of negative 5.75 is going to be positive 5.75. All we're moving, all we're doing is moving the, removing the direction. And again, this one, pay attention. This is an easy one. Like if you're rushing through it, um, this is going to be 1.05. This one here, I'm going to convert this to a decimal just so it helps our brain. Um, do, do, do. So I know that the absolute value bracket is going to take that negative away. It's going to just remove it and I don't have to worry about it. I just did the division there and that's 3.2. So the absolute value of negative 13 over 4 is 3.25. If I evaluate this one, the negative goes away. It's 0.5. This one has, oops, sorry, this one has no brackets around it, so it stays as a negative 1.25. And this one here, again, the absolute values are going to negate. It's going to take away the negative, so it's going to be, oh, sorry, I said it's going to take away the negative, then I wrote it, uh, 0.3 repeating. All right, so ascending order. So that means you start from your smallest and you get bigger. All right, since none of you are here in the room with me to talk to me about this, um, and when we're putting them back in order, what we have to use is their original format. You'll be deducted half a mark if you use the evaluated, edited, format, transformed, whatever you want to call it. You got to go back to the original form. Okay, so I'm going to start in ascending order. Hopefully I get this right because you guys aren't here to help me. So negative 2 happened first, so that one's gone, and then negative 1.25 comes next, so that one's gone. Sorry, I'm going to cross these off here. I'm all by myself. Uh, 0.5 is our next one, but I have to put it in absolute value brackets. Okay, and I'm writing too big. I'm going to run off the page. So that one's gone, and then I have 1.05, that one's gone, and then who's next? Who's next? 3.25, but again, I gotta go back to the original format, so absolute value bracket, negative 13 over four. And I want your brackets to be significant. They should come above and below that number, because um, sometimes they look like the number ones. And that's no fault of ours, but sometimes they just do. And then we have the negative three and one third in absolute value brackets. That was a little aggressive with the brackets. And then I have 3.5 in absolute value brackets. I'm sorry guys, I'm rolling off the page here. I haven't done this very well, but hopefully you're keeping up. And my last one is absolute of negative 5.75. Okay, so that's really, like this lesson isn't hard. It's not gonna take you a ton of time. Um, it's, it's just a little different. We haven't really worked with absolute values. Mr. Froggy down here says, so absolute values gives a positive answer. And Mr. Froggy is right. So if the absolute value is being evaluated, it's going to give me a positive answer because we're just looking at the distance away from zero and we're not worried about whether it's going left or right. Okay. Um, so now we're just doing kind of order of operations um, with our absolute value brackets. And like I said, they are brackets. We treat them like brackets. So what we know right here is that the three is multiplied by the difference of what's happening in there. So they're just treated like every other bracket. They just do something extra. So order of operations says I got to tackle my brackets first. So I'm going to have five minus three absolute value of negative five. Now here's, so now the question is, is do I evaluate 
my does the three get multiplied in or do I evaluate this this uh, absolute first evaluate your absolute first because there's one more thing to do with the brackets right one more thing to do inside the bracket so we're gonna evaluate that um, so we know that um, negative five is going to evaluate to positive five. So when I actually conduct what happens in the absolute value brackets, that's going to change it to five. I know that the three and what happens inside the brackets are multiplied. So I'm replacing the absolute brackets with round brackets and I'm changing my negative five to a positive five. So I'm going to have five minus 15. So my answer is negative 10. So that just, it, it, feels a little bit different. I think this is where people get caught up. They're not sure what to do first here. Um, and this is what I would always do. I'd evaluate it and change the type of brackets that you're working with. Um, that helps my brain to see it a little bit better. Okay, so now we're coming over to part B. Sorry, if you didn't grab that, just pause the video. Now we're coming over to part B. So everything is inside the brackets. So order of operations says, I do what's inside the brackets first, great, doing that. And then it says I deal with the exponents first. Um, I could multiply and deal with the exponents at the same time, which I think I'm gonna do. So negative 36 plus 25, still in absolute brackets because I haven't evaluated the absolute yet. I'm not done working inside the bracket. So that's gonna give me hopefully negative 11. If I did that all right. And now I'm gonna evaluate the absolute, just like you executing a square root. Um, if I say the square root of four, if I, so if I say do that, do the square root of four, you know you're gonna get an answer of two. So you've performed the root. You have to perform the absolute here. So that's gonna evaluate to 11. I don't need to put round brackets around it because there's no more math that's going with it, but you wouldn't be wrong if you threw some brackets around it. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not, it's not necessary. And can be a little confusing if you're looking at it. Look at me, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. Oh, silly boy, look at me. Kind of looks like 11. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, so you're gonna have a couple of word problems in your assignment, and I would encourage you to make sure you read them thoroughly. Okay, Kelly works in a hospital. One day she takes the elevator from the first floor up to the sixth floor. Okay, so I am on floor one. This is me, and I'm going to take the elevator to the sixth floor. We know that the sixth floor is up, hopefully. So how many floors did I go up? This is always the question. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're looking at what's the total change of floors that Kelly has done in that day. So what we're gonna create is an absolute value statement. All we're looking at, we're gonna remove things. We're not looking where I end, we're not looking where I have a net displacement of zero, what we're looking at is how much did I move that day? So I went up five. So it's a positive five because I go up, but I don't care about direction. So I'm gonna put absolute values or brackets around it. Because I would still get the same, I traveled five floors if I had gone from the sixth to the first floor. Okay. Uh, then she has to go to the second floor to work in the gift shop for an hour. Okay, so I was on the sixth floor. I was here, and now I gotta go down to the second floor. So one, two, three, four. So I went down four. I don't care if it's up or down though, but really down in math, is a negative, but I don't care about direction, so I'm gonna ignore the negative by using absolute brackets. All right, after lunch, Kelly goes, I'm trying to find a different color pen. Uh, Kelly go, I got purple, but that's not gonna cut the mustard. Um, 
I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, after lunch, Kelly goes to the fourth floor to visit patients. Okay, so I'm on the second floor, and then I gotta go one, two to the fourth floor. You can kind of see that. So I went up again. And then down to the first floor to greet visitors and give directions. I am a busy bee. So I'm on the fourth and I gotta go down one, two, three to get to the first floor again. So I'm going down three. And again, I don't really care about the down part of it. I'm just caring about how much I've moved that day. So we're gonna evaluate, we're gonna execute, we're gonna complete the absolute values. So I'm gonna have five plus four plus two plus three. Because all I'm doing is I'm negating, I'm evaluating what the absolute of five is, it's five. The absolute of negative four is positive four. So that's all I'm doing there. And if I've done this right, I have traveled 14 floors. in the day. And that's it. Um, I would encourage you to use the rest of the period to get this assignment done or study for your chapter six, complete those assignments. Uh, this one's pretty easy, nice to get done quickly. Um, so I would encourage you to do that, but it is, you are, you can make decisions for yourself, but just make sure you use the period productively. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to be back on Monday and we can go over anything then. Chapter 6 test is on Tuesday. Bye guys, we'll see you soon.